How much do you think this case cost me? Just to help you out a little bit, it comes with a hinged tempered glass side panel, a magnetic mesh front, and four fully addressable RGB fans with an included controller pre-installed. Give up? It's actually less money than you might think. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. Montec is a PC component company that was established in 2016 and primarily sells CPU coolers, power supplies, gaming peripherals, and of course, cases. Today, I got myself one of these cases. This is the Montec Air 100. And like I said in the intro, it comes with a lot of features for not that much price. And speaking of the price, it's a little complicated when talking about this case. The MSRP for the Montec Air 100 is 100 US dollars. However, I bought mine for 55 bucks. If you wanna grab one of these cases for yourself, I'll leave affiliate links down below for both Newegg and Amazon. Newegg is where I got my case for almost half off, but some people like Amazon better and they consistently sell it for $80. The reason this is so complicated is because at almost double the price, this case looks different in terms of value. But we'll discuss that later on. Right now, let's take a deeper dive at the Air 100. Opening the Air 100 is as simple as flipping the pull ring out and pulling the hinged glass door open. It then lifts right off the hinges for easy build access. Getting a closer look, starting with the view window side, shows us this case accommodates micro ATX and mini ITX size motherboards. There's plenty of cable pass-throughs around the motherboard tray with two up top, two down the side with rubber grommets, and three along the bottom. You've also got a pass-through for your graphics card power connector in addition to plenty of ventilation on the power supply shroud. There's also mounting hole locations on your power supply shroud that can accommodate two 120 millimeter fans. If you're curious about what size components can fit into the Montec Air 100, this case can accommodate up to a 330 millimeter graphics card, a 160 millimeter power supply, and up to a 160 millimeter tall CPU tower heatsink. Coming up the back, there's four PCI expansion slots that are breakaway and cannot be reinstalled once removed. The rear section supports a 120 millimeter fan and the case comes with one pre-installed, so you might as well use it. The fan is controlled with a three pin DC connector as well as a five volt addressable RGB connector. The top of the case has space for two 120 mil or two 140 mil fans and there's enough space for a 240 millimeter radiator as well. Front radiator support is up to a 280 millimeter. I tried to fit a 360 millimeter in here because honestly, it looks like it'll fit what with the three 120 mil fans in the front. However, the end tanks were too big on my 360 mil, so it didn't fit no matter what kind of wiggling or finagling I did. I even moved the hard drive tray back a little bit and tried removing it completely, still couldn't make it fit. So the 360 mil just didn't happen for me. But full disclosure, Montac states that only a 280 mil can fit in the front. The front panel is removed easily thanks to magnets. You put your fingers around the sides at the top of the panel and pull outward. It'll hinge down and then slide away. I didn't realize the front panel was magnetic when I first started taking the case apart, so I pulled the entire plastic shroud off that surrounds the magnetic panel. It's not required, but it does make building it easier, especially if you're planning on using different fans or maybe installing a radiator in the front. Speaking of the fans, it's got three more 120 millimeter ARGB fans pre-installed. Everything's cable managed fairly nicely and ran through cutouts in the motherboard tray to the back ARGB controller, which I'll talk about in a second. Speaking of the cable management side, it's accessed by removing two thumb screws at the rear of the case. Pull the panel outward and slide back to remove. Cable management space is plentiful in this case. It's got the same size all the way across the motherboard tray some cases like the Fractal North I just took a look at, and if you haven't checked it out, I'll leave it right up here, have a beveled corner and then the motherboard tray is really shallow. This one's the same all the way across and it's substantial. I mean, you can see I've got all the cables nice and neatly tucked and the panel goes on easy as anything. I don't have to shove it or push on it hard at all. The Air 100 has three Velcro tie downs along the left side of the case. It's also got two two and a half inch removable SSD trays and in the bottom, it's got two 3.5 inch hard disk trays. You'll also note the ARGB hub in the center here. It's got a six connector hub with motherboard connection, or you can use the built-in case operation on your reset button. 
The bottom hard drive tray is completely removable or you can undo a thumb screw and two screws on the bottom and slide it back and forth as well. It's got two different mounting locations in case you have a longer power supply or you wanna run an AIO in the front and you need a little bit extra room for that as well. Speaking of the bottom, it's pretty simplistic down there with a small opening for the power supply airflow. It's got a mesh screen that's held in by slots in the case and it's not easy to remove or install. You also have access to those two screws that when removed allow for movement of the hard drive mount. Moving up top, you've got fine mesh across the entire location here. And I already talked about fan or radiator mounting locations, but they also include a fan filter and it's got cutouts for each screw location so you don't have to continuously remove the filter. Now mine is drilled in the wrong locations so the filter would actually sit offset and hang over the back of the case if I lined it up with those holes. You can still use it and place it central to the case. However, the screw holes are not lining up in my instance. Just a small QC issue that I noted. The Air 100's top IO comes with a power button, hard drive and power lights, a reset button that doubles as the case's lighting button if you don't plug the fans into your motherboard header, two USB 3.0 type A ports, one USB 2.0 type A port, and a headphone and microphone jack. That's everything I thought you might wanna see for the walk around of the Air 100. Are you getting value from this video so far? If so, consider subscribing down below and come back for more PC related content. Now onto my build notes, I'm gonna start with the positives and then move on to the negatives because no case is perfect, right? The first thing on my list of positives is the magnetic release front panel. I think it is so cool that this thing just pops off and snaps back on. It's so easy. Never mind, it doesn't pop right back on like that. It just makes cleaning so much easier. It makes the build process easier overall, and you don't have to worry about breaking anything. If it's your first time building, it just makes it a breeze. The second thing is the hinged tempered glass side panel. It, I took it off for the purposes of this video, but I was so impressed because not only is it hinged, it's a quick release hinge. You can just slide it right off to do the build. It's magnetic too. So when you close it, it seals on this like felt pad they've got here. They've got magnets in the top and the bottom and it's got a little flip latch hinge to it. So getting underneath it or getting into it to open it is really easy. Any PC case that can hinge open is pretty premium to me. The third thing I was really excited about is the cable management space. For such a budget case and a small case, this is a micro ATX case, remember, usually the cable management space is not that good. So the fact that I was able to maneuver everything fine, and I've got RGB headers from each of these fans, mind you, and an RGB controller back there. So I was still able to maneuver things. If I would have had cable extensions to add to this, I think it would have fit with no problems. Speaking of cables, I loved the beveled pass-throughs. All of the uh, cutouts and everything are either rubber grommeted or beveled, and that just prevents from any kind of wire chafing. When you're building, something like that is a nice little touch to not have to worry about any kind of damage to your system that you're putting in there. The last thing that I loved is the addressable RGB fans. You get four of them included with the case. And I mean, if you're gonna be paying for them, you honestly should use them. They're addressable RGB. They all connect to the fan hub, which you can either connect to your motherboard or you can control it through the case's button and it's got pre-installed you know, color combinations here. So I'm able to control all these fans through the case's included controller and I don't even have to worry about the header. Now, even though Montech offers all these features in the case, there is one major negative, the price. It should be $60. I was hyped about this case when I thought it cost $55, which is what I paid. I didn't even know I got it on sale. I just was cruising through Newegg, I saw the price and I bought it. I threw it in my cart because I saw four RGB fans, tempered glass, a mesh front. It had everything that someone could want in a PC case currently in 2023. And the price was right. But the fact that it's $100 USD makes me hesitant because I found myself the whole time I was doing the build, once I started seeing it as a $100 case, I changed my thought process on it. Things that I was willing to look past before uh, started standing out to me. First issue I have is build quality. 
it doesn't really represent a hundred dollar PC case when you're talking about build quality. It's got kind of flimsy metal in some areas where the mesh is at and there's no reinforcement or anything. You can kind of see the top of it wobbles back and forth. Now I don't have fans installed or anything so there's nothing to really kind of hold it in place. The front panel does it as well if you push on it. The uh, top of the power supply shroud is the same way and the back is actually kind of fixed and I don't know if it's because the fans on there or not, but that's one thing worth noting. I would have liked to have seen captive screws for the $100 price on the rear panel. I also saw that the rear fan is mounted with these weird curved edges to the uh, screw mounts. So you have to remove the screws completely. You can't just loosen them and slide the fan up and down. I feel like it could have been a channel and that would have just made it all the better. And then talking about the PCI slot covers, you can't remove and reinstall those. Once you break them off, that's it. So if you buy a different motherboard, you wanna reuse your case or something, and your graphics card slot doesn't line up to where you punch these out at, you're gonna have an empty open gap from moving your graphics card. Now, if you got lucky and your graphics card three sizes thick and you just have to punch out another one, hey, you got lucky. But for me, a $100 case should have reinstallable PCI slot covers. The last thing for me is that QC issue, the top mesh alignment. I'm not gonna install my top mesh because that's where heat is gonna be exhausting out of the case. It's coming out the back and it's going out the top. If you install fans here, you would have even less reason to put the mesh cover on there. But if you live in like a really dusty environment and you wanted to use that magnetic cover, my holes don't line up so it looks kind of um, not good. Unfortunately, no airflow testing was done for this review. The components that I chose to build with were not the best representation for cooling and I don't want to show the Air 100 in a negative light when it might actually be a better contender due to my poor choices. This video was more of just a walk around with build notes of things you may want to consider before purchasing the Air 100 for your PC at home. Now, as always, it's time to answer that final and most important question. Now, if you skip to the end just for this, shame on you. Go back and watch the rest of the video. Should you buy the Montec Air 100? That's a tough one for me. Cause remember, I paid 55 US for this. The MSRP is $100. At the discounted price, I think it's an amazing deal and Montec provides a lot of value in this micro ATX case. But if we're talking about paying $100 for the Air 100, I'd have to pass. There are quite a few companies around that price point that provide better build quality, more features from a well-known company that provides excellent customer support for their products. Things like Fantex's Eclipse G360A, Lee and Lee's Landcool 215 or O11 Air Mini, and Fractal Design's Pop Series or Focus 2 are some excellent choices in the $100 price category. Don't get confused, I'm not bashing the Air 100. I think it looks great, it was easy to build in, and they give you a lot of features in this small form factor. Now, my only gripe is the price. In fact, while I was making this video, the case went off of sale and back on sale. So while I'm filming this, it's on sale again for $55. Now, that might not be the case while you're watching the video, but my recommendation to you is if you want to buy the Montec Air 100 for your build at home, besides using my affiliate links down below, make sure you wait for it to go on sale again. Because at $55, this thing is a steal. At $100, it's gonna be a pass. If you enjoyed today's video and you wanna see more of the same, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Then you can go ahead and view these videos next because this one's done. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one. Why don't we go back to, why don't we go back to your bedroom?